Okay, there we go. Uh, so I've had a few requests from various different members of all different ages um, about utilizing social media for their business. I think we are all fully aware we're bombarded with social media every day. And uh, people are asking, how can I use social media? What am I allowed to say on social media? That's a really big one I get asked. What am I not allowed to say? Um, and how can I actually promote this opportunity and promote these products in the realm of social media, um, you know, in, in the right way, but also in a way that's going to be able to grow my business. And uh, I'm a, a social media specialist, I guess you could say. It's a particular passion of mine. I've actually done a media degree because um, I'm obsessed with all things digital media. So what I love doing is um, educating people about the basics of social media. Um, and tonight's training really is just that. So we're gonna start with the basics, not to worry. I'm not gonna be talking about creating videos and running your own YouTube channels and going way, way above. I'm really starting from the basics. And you know what? If we get a great response and great feedback and I hear that we need a more advanced training, then that's something we could deliver further on down the line. Uh, but for now, let's get stuck into our basic social media training. So, I always like to start off with just a few of our really key amazing credentials about the company. Um, and it always blows me away that last year we sold the equivalent of over 4 million cans of Alpha Lipid Lifeline um, in all of the 18 countries we're in now, which is an absolutely huge number. And the really exciting thing is that we are growing globally. You know, over 300,000 members who are purchasing our products, a million customers are day who are using a new image product um, and we're having more and more new members join every day and what is really exciting and really I guess inspiring is that we get some really top income earners that have really taken hold of the opportunity that new image provides um, and they've really run with it and a lot of those top income earners are utilizing social media they're using a, an online platform to be able to connect with others to be able to build relationships and uh, that's part of the reason why we're going to do this training today as well. So let's just start with the basics of understanding. So why is social media crucial for your business? Um, because it wasn't crucial necessarily 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, we were able to get by for a long, long time without it. But so why is social media in such demand and why is it so important for you and your business right now? Well, the main thing is that I love to look at Facebook. Just focus on Facebook because I always say, instead of executing, you know, five different things poorly and, and trying to juggle too many things, let's just focus on one thing and do it really well. And the fact that Facebook has over 16 million users tells me that that is a platform that has an awful lot of people and a lot of those people are going to be potential customers or members for your business. So Facebook is a fantastic platform to be able to reach a huge amount of people um, and to be able to build relationships. One thing I really love about Facebook is that it gives you a voice to be able to share your story story. And that's what people really relate to. They're going to relate to your story and you as a person more than a brand advertisement. Okay. And that really you're going to be able to create your own little sub community in Facebook, which is going to be able to allow you to build relationships. A lot of people speak to me about social media as though it's just an advertising platform like it as though it was taking out an ad in the yellow pages when actually Facebook particularly is not built for being purely about advertisements. Facebook is about building two-way relationships and through those relationships being able to engage and identify potential new customers and members. 
So I'm assuming that everyone on tonight's training already has a Facebook profile or a Facebook account. Maybe some of you have one, but you're not very active on it. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to start with the basics. And if any of you do not yet have a Facebook profile, um, uh, then I would absolutely recommend that you get one because Facebook is the essential place to start. Now, once you have your Facebook profile, what I always recommend for beginners, okay, someone who is not yet um, active on Facebook in promoting their business is that you start with a Facebook group. Now, a Facebook group is an ideal way for a new member to start connecting with their current and their potential customers. The purpose of a group is it's all about that two-way communication with these current and these potentials. And you're building this little online community, this little group where people can obviously share, you can educate, you can motivate, um, and obviously give information about products, specials, testimonials. But essentially, you're building a, an online community through relationships. Once you have established a really strong little Facebook group, you're feeling confident with Facebook, you're understanding social media and how to be able to use it as a way to engage with customers and potential customers. The next step after that is where I would say, go ahead and create a Facebook page. Now, a lot of people say to me, well, Emma, why wouldn't I just create a Facebook page to begin with? A Facebook page, yes, is great when you've got a really well-established network. For a brand new member who does not yet have a lot of customers, they're just starting out really trying to promote themselves to their family and friends. A Facebook page can be a, a, a harder way to get traction, which is because a Facebook business page is completely public and it is more one-way communication. It is built for businesses. It is a feature on Facebook that is specifically tailored for businesses to be able to communicate outwards to an audience, but it also takes an awful lot of work and a lot of content to get a lot of followers of your page and to actually get people to engage in that page. Because uh, like I said, it is more about one way and it takes a lot of effort in terms of content generation and trying to get the general public public to like your page. Um, the intimacy of a Facebook group does allow for more of that relationship building, which especially if you're a new member is ideal in the beginning. So what we're going to start with first is looking at creating a Facebook group and how you can promote your uh, business through a Facebook group. And then, like I said, a more advanced session that I'd be happy to do in the future would be about creating your Facebook page. The great thing is that both Facebook groups and pages are completely free, uh, which is fantastic, um, but they are both dependent on creating engaging content and making sure that you are being consistent with the content you're delivering to your audience. So creating a Facebook group. It's really easy. Like I said, it's free. Choosing a group name. I always say you need to choose a name and tailor your group so that it is not going to be purely focused on one product. For example, I wouldn't go calling my group Alpha Lipid Lifeline <laughs> because it is purely promoting that one product. And it's not necessarily going to be attractive to potential customers who don't yet know anything about New Image. So for example here, I've chosen a group name like Healthy Living Sydney. It's a very generic name. It implies obviously, um, you know, that I'm Sydney based and this group is all about healthy living and topics that are related to that. Uh, so I often see uh, groups or pages that have very specific titles. And usually if we think of a net, we want to have a broad title in the hope that we can capture more interest and more people into that group. You can make your group public or private. And I always say, don't invite your friends 
into your Facebook group until it's finished, okay? Because there's no point in inviting all of your friends to your Facebook group if all it's got is a name and there's nothing else in there. There's no photo, there's no description, there's no content, there's no posts. So I always leave that till the end when you've got a bit of content in there and you're happy with it and ready for it to go live. So once you have created your group, it actually is so easy because it tells you step-by-steps steps, prompts that you should be doing to complete the group. Now, one of the things that I always like to do is for your group photo, which is what people will see when they look at your group or you ask them to join your group, and making sure that your photo is relative to what your group is all about. So yes, I might include in the photo an image of the product. I might say something about colostrum. But as you can see, I've also got there, you know, someone exercising in Sydney. So it's again, relating, it's telling the audience, this group is about healthy living um, and, and in Sydney, because that's who I want to attract and that's where I'm based. But it's absolutely up to you what you would like to call your group and what you want it to be about. Doesn't necessarily have to be about general healthy living, you might uh, absolutely love Pilates, or you might absolutely love uh, recipes and cooking, you might love, um, you know, designing your own smoothies, any particular topic that is going to be related to new image and the products that we offer, um, then you can always intertwine them. But again, you're going to reach more people with a more generic group theme. So also add a description for your group. So this also will tell everyone you invite into the group, what is this group about, okay? They want to know, oh, someone's invited me to join this group. What is it? So I put here as an example, I'm Emma, mother of two and a local Sydney girl. Ever since the COVID pandemic changed all our lives, I've been passionate about sharing my knowledge and passion for how to improve your inner health and how to protect your family. Join this group to learn tips on how to stay healthy, live healthy, protect your family and connect with others. So in a very short, little, concise couple of paragraphs there, I've told you know, my audience what this group is all about. So the last step that you do, like I said, is invite all of your friends and family to join the group. So once you've got your description, your photo, you know what that group is going to be about, then you send the invitation to invite all of your Facebook friends into the group. Once they're in the group, this is where we've got to start thinking about content. You can't take a break, okay? Maybe you've invited all your friends, you've got 10 people in the group, maybe you've got 20 people in the group, amazing. So now they're all sitting there waiting for the content and the content is king, okay? Content is key. And when we say that though, it doesn't mean that your content has to be professional and you need to learn how to be a photographer and use Adobe and make professional videos and be a professional vlogger. It does not mean any of that. And some of the most powerful social media content is authentic content. And I'm going to cover more about that in this section now when we, we talk about the content you can put into your group. So the audience who joined your group, they joined it for a reason. And majority of the time when you invite all of your Facebook friends to join your group, majority, they've joined it because they know you. They know your face. They're either a friend of yours, a family of yours. You know, they've got some sort of connection to you. And I love the quote, you know, never underestimate the influence you have on others. And I think that's really key that we never forget. Well, yes, they've accepted the invitation to join because maybe they're interested in healthy living. Sure, I'd be interested in, you know, fitness tips and, you know, what's good for my inner health. But really I joined because she's my friend. You know, I'm happy to support my friend. And so we need to appreciate that and value that. And because they joined your group for a reason, they want to see from you. 
Now that is crucial. If that is the only thing you take away from tonight, I'm happy, okay? They want to see from you. You are the person that they connected with. You are the person that resonated with them. Maybe they were just, they're a customer of yours. You've met them maybe once or twice, or you've had a, a, a bit of a communication with them and you asked them to join the group and they did. Well, you had an influence on them. Something about you made them say, yes, click, I'll join the group. And that means that they want to hear from you. They want to hear your opinions. What products do you like? How do you take the product? How do you stay healthy? They don't necessarily want to hear the generic brand advertisement for healthy living and, you know, the model holding the, the colostrum and what the model, you know, says about the advertisement. People know that's fake. You know, they know that's not real. What they know is real is you and your opinions and you're going to have an influence on them. So that is key when you're thinking about content. Don't just rely on the pre-generated content that you see in the Instagram pages or the Facebook pages, because, yeah, they're great for generating advertisements. And every now and again, yeah, we can pop in an advertisement. But your groups, your social media presence should be more focused on you and your relationships that you're building with others because that's who they want to hear from. The content that you are putting into your group or onto social media, because if you don't have a group, maybe you're just putting it onto your Facebook profile and that's fine. But content should never be 100% product promotion and again this is relating to it should never all be about advertisements and product because again people know they're fake so I like this rule of four and it really is a cycle that your content on social media shouldn't just touch on product it should touch on the four categories of lifestyle testimonial product and education Okay, and what we'll take a look at in a moment as well is how with some examples of how great social media platforms don't just have product promotion, they actually incorporate all four of these themes into their social media content. And it's very easy for you to do that too. So for me, and I know I'm using the word fake there, and some of the time that has some sort of stigma attached to it. Fake doesn't necessarily mean bad. It just means that it's been generated by the brand to look a certain way. It's not what we would call authentic. And authentic is content you have created that is maybe about you, your lifestyle as a person, maybe one of your customers or one of your team members. So this is an example here where, you know, yes, you can share the company brand advertisements. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you actually share content of you and your lifestyle, how you like to use the products, it can actually be a lot more engaging. Because like I said, people don't know that family in the advertisement. They don't know who they are holding those products or looking really happy. But, you know, it, if it's your friends and your family in your Facebook group, people who you've connected, connected with, oh, they know your face. They know that's your daughter. They've got a connection with that. They're going to engage with that photo more because they trust it. It's you. It captures their attention. So always remembering that authentic content can be a lot more in, engaging than generated brand content. And also to remember when it comes to content that it doesn't end after you've just posted it, okay? So, yes, content is about you, you know, take a great photo or, you know, you've put together a great little testimonial. Maybe it's a 20-second video and you click post. Great, you've done that. But the work doesn't end there. 
So in order to be able to build those relationships I keep talking about, in order to be able to identify who those potential customers are who are in that group, who show a bit of interest, who are commenting on your posts, they're liking your posts, you've got to start engaging with them. And it's that engagement, it's those conversations that will have more of an impact than whatever you said in the post. Okay, so you have to engage. Whenever someone comments on your post, oh, I love that. You know, oh, your skin's looking amazing. You know, oh, your daughter's so cute. No matter what that comment is, you should be replying to it. You should always be replying to it. Oh, thanks so much for your comment. Yeah, my skin feels amazing. I've been using this product. Would love to tell you some more about it. I'll send you, I'll send you a private message. You know, you're, you're creating that engagement. You're trying to build those relationships. And of course, always encouraging, let me send you a private message is great because then you can have a proper chat about it and really start telling them about the product and the opportunity. But you're not going to get those interactions unless you're engaging with your audience in the group or on social media. And of course, always evaluating after every post. OK, so for each post that you've put out there, you need to be able to look at the stats around it afterwards. And the great thing is that, you know, you can see that you can see how many likes one of your posts got. You can see, oh, they really like that photo. I look shocking. I can't believe it got double the amount of likes that this other one did. Um, you need to be able to evaluate what content is your audience engaging with more. OK, what are they liking more? What are they commenting on more? And what time of day do I seem to get a better response? What time of day do I know most of the audience in my group are active on social media? For example, if they all work nine to five Monday to Friday, if that's the audience you tend to interact with, well, they're probably not going to be sitting there on Facebook at 10 a.m. in the morning because they've just started work. But, you know, sitting on the train home on the way home after work at about 5.30, yeah, I know they're all sitting there looking on Facebook. So thinking about and evaluating what time and what content does your audience actually want to see from you? Because, again, it's important to remember who your audience is and what's going to keep them engaged. So social media presence and utilizing social media for your business actually is not about you telling the world about the product and about the opportunity and plastering it out there and just saying, this is what I've got, take it or leave it. Social media and utilizing social media is all about building those relationships and always saying to yourself, what does my audience want to see next? What will make me, you know, join a group? What will make me click like on a post? That's what you've got to think. You've got to put yourself in their shoes and think about what will keep them engaged. So one of the first points I always like to say is to share your why story into your group or onto your Facebook platform. So like I said, if you're um, sharing in your Facebook profile or you've already got a business page, absolutely fine. If you've got a group, this is an amazing way to start. And that is to share your why story. Now, I, this is where I like to always say, be brave. Don't just put it in a post, you know, do it in a, a one to two minute video. But sharing your why story with your audience is going to let them know who you are and why you've created this group really, really quickly. And that's what people want to know. They really want to know at the heart of, well, why have you done this? Why did you join that company, New Image? And why are you talking to me about this product? Or well, sharing your why story, it's a really quick way of explaining it all to them. So the way I like to um, develop a why story, it's four very simple steps. And I'm sure if you're anything like me, I have sat through that many people's why stories and, you know, 20 minutes later, they're still rambling on. They're still telling me the whole life story. It's 20 minutes. I haven't got all day. They're still talking about it. You know, can they get to the point? A why story doesn't need to be long to have impact and to get your message across. And especially on social media, we've got a very limited amount of time to capture their attention. 
So a why story can be developed with four simple points. And I always say, if you haven't done this activity before, I recommend you do it and write down your answers and then start practicing uh, what your answers would be. So the next time you need to tell your why story, you've got it ready to go. So you start with point one. What did you do before you joined new image? Point two, what made you decide to join? And then point three, what has changed in your life since you joined? And the last point you share with them, which is one of the most important ones, is what goal you're currently going for. And I've given you an example here to show you just how fast a why story can be and that it doesn't need to be long. So here's my example. Before I joined New Image, I worked full time in a nine to five job I didn't like. I was always tired and stressed, trying to take care of my family while also juggling a full-time career. A friend I knew um, was uh, knew I was always feeling tired and had no energy. She suggested I try New Image Colostrum, which was meant to be good for my inner health and would give me more energy. She said if I became a member, I'd get a bigger discount on my purchase. So I just did whatever she said and I decided to join. Um, What's actually changed since I joined is that once I started taking the product, I actually felt my health improve and I did have more energy, probably in a matter of days. I was so impressed about how I was feeling. I told my whole family about it and then they all wanted to try it as well. My friend then showed me how easy it was for my family and my friends to join up as my team members. And then before I knew it, I had this team that were interested in these products. And then suddenly I was earning a monthly commission. And that's when I realized that this could, I could be more than just a customer, um, but this could actually become my own little part-time business. And it had all kind of started on its own with, you know, barely any investment, it just went on. And right now, my goal is to keep sharing these healthy products with 10 new people every month, um, just like my friend showed to me, and basically show my team how easy it is to have their own part-time business. So that was my example of a why story. I did that all in about what? two minutes do you think about two minutes maybe less than that maybe a minute but as you can see I touched on all four of those points which very succinctly tells you who I am you know why I've joined what's changed in my life since I joined and what goal I'm currently going for and the thing to remember when you're creating your why story is it needs to feel genuine. Don't try and elevate it. Don't try and make it sound like, oh, I joined because my friend was an executive diamond and I wanted to be a diamond and it, she was so successful and I wanted all of that. No, because let's be honest, I would say 80% of the time, why do people become a member? because they would like a discount, because they see the value in having their own membership account, because they'll save more. That's the honest truth. And the honest truth tends to be what people relate to more. Everyone can relate to, well, if I get a discount, sure, I do it. <laughs> Sign me up. Everyone relates to that. Everyone relates to a sale, a bargain and more value. And that's what's going to capture their attention, not telling them a big fake story about how you dreamed of being a diamond executive. No, just be honest with them. Let them know that you were interested in the product. You were happy to get a discount. So you decided to become a member. If that's your story, that's the truth of it. And that's what people will relate to the most. So next, this is where I am going to talk about those four different themes for the content that you produce for social media. So remember, it should never be 100% product. So when I say your content should touch on lifestyle, what is lifestyle? What is a lifestyle content? So lifestyle content is things like blog posts, inspiration or motivation and quotes. 
So when I say blog posts, it means things about you, you as a person and your lifestyle. So if my Facebook group is all about my healthy living in Sydney and every weekend I go and do Pilates in a Sydney park, well, maybe I take a photo of me doing Pilates in the park and then I post it. Maybe I've taken a photo of a beautiful, healthy meal that I've just prepared and I post it. Those are blog style posts. Those are lifestyle posts about you. You might also have things like quote of the day or inspirational quotes, things that you see that are, are general, more general related to lifestyle and to the life that you're living. Testimonial, and this is a big one that I feel a lot of people forget to do on social media, which is really sad because testimonial probably has the biggest impact. Testimonial tends to have a larger impact than a product post. And a testimonial, of course, is all about what are your favourites? You know, what are your reviews? How do you like to apply it? Um, and then, of course, customer reviews as well. Um, and you might even have interviews as well with team members or customers, someone that's tried this product for a week, they're loving it, someone that's been on this product for a year and they're completely loyal to it. They're all under the topic of testimonial. It's really important to have that element of testimonial constant throughout your social media platform because it keeps reminding your audience that this is authentic, that these are real reviews. These are real people using these products. You are a real person using these products and this is the impact it's had on your life. These are why you love them. And if you think about it, all of those sites today, like TripAdvisor, Google Reviews, um, even Facebook Business Pages has reviews function now. And we all do it. You know, before I go on a holiday and I book the hotel that I think I'd like to stay at, what's the first thing we do? We jump on Expedia, we jump on TripAdvisor, we look for the hotel. What's the rating? What's the review? What did they have to say about it? What did they like? And what didn't they like? We all do it because we long to see those authentic reviews from our peers, from people that we would trust more than a company saying, oh, this product is great. This brand is great. Well, we don't believe that as much as the girl down the street. I believe the girl down the street. What's she saying about the product? <laughs> so don't forget to include testimonial as part of your content. Now, of course, we do have to have product content. And of course, this is where we can include some of those professionally done advertisements. Um, and as I said, we might call them fake content, but when we say fake, it just means they're not generated by you. And so under product though, remember, it doesn't just have to be those company generated advertisements. It can also be product of the week where you have features and benefits of this product. I think a lot of people don't realize just how many products New Image provides, just how many products we actually have on offer. And a product of the week feature is a fantastic way to be able to show your audience, we are so much more than just Alpha Lipid Lifeline. You know, I know that's what we're well known for, but we are so much more than that. Also ingredients claims. People love hearing about ingredients. What will this particular ingredient do for my skin? What will colostrum do for my skin? The growth factors. People like those scientific claims, which is because we believe those scientific claims. People have faith when we hear that this ingredient, it's amazing for your inner health because it does this. People go, oh yeah, amazing. Okay, great. So it, having those ingredient claims is a really, really strong way to engage with an audience. And it is also touching on education. Now, education is really, really big topic when it comes to social media, because people are all about what will I learn from you? OK, yes, you can show me pretty pictures. You can show me, you know, tutorials of you using the product. But what am I going to learn? And that is the value of what you can deliver. And that is how you will establish those relationships. So, for example, my healthy living group, 
I might put education in there um, uh, with content about exercise tips, my healthy recipes, my smoothie demos. This is what I put in my morning smoothie. Health facts. People love, did you know? Did you know has grabbed so much attention. One of my favorites is, did you know that 80% of your body's immune system actually resides in your gut? I've learned that one off by heart because it is my favorite and it sticks. You can all, yeah, I'm sure you've all heard that one before as well, but I love it. So did you know facts and all of these educational little tips and videos that you can put into your social media platform, which are going to keep people engaged because they're learning something from you. They're getting value out of being in your social media platform. Okay, so we've got examples here and I've taken these examples of all of these ads that I could find, okay? All of these ads um, that you can find, the company has generated, and some of them are absolutely beautiful. But does this mean that your particular Facebook group or your Facebook presence should be all ads looking like this? No. Because is that going to keep your audience engaged? Does your audience know who those models are? Are they going to look at that beautiful advertisement that's so pristine and going to relate to it or going to engage with it? No, they're just pretty advertisements. So your social media presence, your group needs to be a combination of product and advertisement as well as your own authentic content. So just remember, you don't want your whole social media platform to be branded when we say fake, so not authentic advertising. Okay, because if it's that, it won't engage with your audience. This is an example that I've found online from someone else um, who actually does a very good job at using those four elements. So they've actually barely got any product or advertising in this collection right here. And I actually want to show you as I was going through each of these posts um, from this particular profile, which is from a, a similar brand of ours. And I'm here to be honest, this is a great example from this particular distributor of how they have put their social media presence together very well. And if we look at each of these posts, that one, that first one is education. That second one, lifestyle. The third, product. Let's keep going. Education, education, product. Education, education, testimonial. Product, testimonial, lifestyle. So can you see the difference there? Can you see the variety that they've got in their content? And it is beautifully done. I'm going to say it is absolutely beautifully done. And if you're anything like me, you're looking at the screen and you're going, oh, I wouldn't mind reading about that. Yep, that, what's that post about? Avocado versus butter? Oh, I wish I could see that. That looks quite interesting. Oh, I'd be interested. You do. You look at it and you go, oh, what? I'll learn something from that post. I'm going to learn something about avocado versus butter. <laughs> and that's what we're engaged by. We want to know what that learning is. We want to know what that education is, as opposed to just looking at a generic model holding a product that, like I said, people know it's fake or not authentic. So that is a fantastic example of the type of content you should aim for in terms of variety. Now, I also want to touch on this last point of it's not about post and it finishes there. You post, then you're going to engage. And when you're engaging in the comments, it's important to remember to thank people for commenting, okay? It, we're showing our appreciation that they took the time and the effort to actually write a comment in the comment box. Because these days, I don't know about you, but yeah, if something tickles my fancy, I'll click like. I'll do that. I'll give a one push on my click. I'll click like. For me to leave a comment on a post these days, it's got to amaze me. It's got to have made me laugh or I've got to have read it and gone, oh, wow, I didn't know that before. Or I have to look at it and go, oh, that's so beautiful. Love this. 
okay? It takes a lot of effort these days for people to leave a comment. So when someone does, make sure that you're acknowledging that and you're thanking them. A great way to trigger that engagement is to ask them questions, okay? And that is also a great, great little detour into getting them to connect with you in a private message setting where you can be more casual because you're chatting privately. So remembering to ask questions and encourage sharing. So if someone says to you, oh, you know, I loved your 30 second workout video and your tips on how to maximize Pilates, reply back. Oh, thank you so much. Really appreciate the encouragement. Hey, it, do you want to share in the group your tips for what you do with Zumba? Okay, encourage sharing in the group because that is a fantastic way for your community to really start engaging with each other. And when you've got a group on Facebook where they're answering each other's questions, they're sharing content as well as you, that's when you know you've got a really effective group. Okay, if it's all just you, push, push, push with no comments, no engagement, no nothing, then your group actually isn't creating the results that you want it to create. And you're not going to be able to transform those potential customers that are in your group into customers unless they're getting some value out of that group. So the key with engagement is really remembering it's based on two-way communication. So building a relationship and getting to know someone online, it's no different than if you were doing it face-to-face. -face. And so what I always say is if you met someone on the street and they, you know, complimented you or something or, you know, you were looking at them, you struck up a conversation, you thought that they could be a potential customer, well, you would be asking them questions, you would be, you know, saying, oh, well, where do you live? What do you do for work? Have you tried, you know, a health product before like this? Are you interested in health? You would be asking them so many questions to get to know who they are and start building that rapport. Well, just because this is in an online setting, it doesn't change. You still have to be asking those questions and having that two-way communication with your audience evaluate. So I spoke about this earlier as well. So this is where you have to think about what content does my audience like the most? Are they, you know, am I getting 10 times more likes for videos versus photos? Okay, you have to evaluate that. You have to know what your audience wants from you. What time of day are your audience checking Facebook? And what topics are trending? Okay, so for example, COVID. COVID is everywhere right now. You know, we hear about COVID every single day. Every single day someone brings it up or it's on the news, it's in the, in the paper, it's everywhere. So that is a trending topic. So if you post anything on social media or into your group that touches on COVID, touches on protect your family, how you're staying healthy, boost your immune system, well, that's a trending topic which people are then more likely to relate to, they're more likely to engage with because it's a topic that everyone is currently talking about. Okay, so I love doing this little visual example when I do a social media training. And this little visual example is where I always say, look, each of these posts, they're all saying the exact same message, <laughs> okay? They're all talking about the colostrum essence face mask, the ingredients and how good it is. So what is gonna grab your attention more? A written text like here on the left, black and white text, it's quite long, I'm looking at it and my eyes are glazing over even now, just looking at that, I'm not gonna read all of that. Are you gonna read all of that? A photo, definitely much better, more engaging. My eyes are more drawn to the color, I can see more clearly, oh, yep, it's about some sort of beauty product she's putting on her face, got it. Captures my attention or, the last one, it's a one minute video. 
where she uh, has one on her face and she's telling me about the features and benefits. Now, the thing to remember is a photo grabs more attention than written text, but a video is more memorable than a photo. So this is where a lot of you might start thinking, Emma, I've never posted a video in my life. I hate public speaking. I could never do it. Well, this is where I say, of course, with everything, practice makes perfect. But the beauty of authentic content on social media is it is not about being perfect. In fact, people don't like perfect content because they tend to think it's fake. They like content that looks real. That's you in your pajamas, putting the face mask on. You know, you've got a glass of wine in one hand while you're talking about the features and benefits in the other. They like that because it's real and they can relate to it. So this is where I would encourage all of you to think about being brave and think about maybe generating some video content of yourself, but also remembering it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but your video is going to stick with people more than a photo. Okay, so thinking about video content where do you start? What makes an engaging video? These are my top tips. So remember to always thinking about your surroundings and checking your frame. So if you're doing a little spiel about a product and you're just holding your camera phone, looking at you, well, what's behind you, okay? You know, have you got the messy kitchen? behind you with all of the washing? Have you got screaming kids running behind you in the background in chaos so that when people watch the video, they're not actually looking at you. They're looking at the messy kitchen behind you, okay? Things like that are gonna be a distraction. And exactly like I've done right now, you know, I've thought about what's behind me um, and I've made sure I'm in the centre of my frame as well. So are you off to the side for the, the whole video? I know if I had to watch a two minute video of someone just off centre of the camera, it would drive me nuts. Would it drive you nuts? Is it driving you just a little bit nuts right now that I'm, I'm not in centre? Thinking about what angle? you're speaking to the camera. Because is this just a little bit too close for comfort? Is this just making you feel a little bit like you're looking up my nose? Or you can see every single pore on my face? You know, it, it tends to make people want to go, whoa, whoa, Emma, you're too close to the camera. You know, step back. So thinking about the frame and the angle, because also when you're doing a video, people want to tend to be able to see and feel like they have eye contact with you. So it's why I've been looking at the camera all night, because I want you to feel like I'm speaking to you. That's right, you. You sitting right there directly, that's who I'm speaking to. But if you can't actually see my eyes and I'm off in the distance and I'm not really looking at the camera much, it's breaking that connection that we have together, isn't it? So that's why always thinking about where am I looking? Am I centered in my frame? And can they see my eyes? Do they feel like they've got eye contact with me? Checking for any background noise and hey, you know, I live in an apartment on quite a loud street, hence my headset. So that way I'm trying to limit the background noise. And my tips for when you are about to film is to make sure you've thought about the following things. Have you got an introduction? And have you got a purpose? What is the call to action? Make sure you fare well and ask for engagement. So these are really key tips when it comes to creating an engaging video. So an introduction, it can be as simple as, hello, welcome to Emma's top health tips for the week. I've welcomed, I've said hello, and I've introduced what this video is. The purpose, so what is the whole purpose of this video? What are you watching me for? Because you wanna learn about these top tips I'm about to show you. A call to action. So many videos forget this element. I think it drives me nuts and it's one of the key things I always see. 
So when people finish watching your video, what is it you want them to do? That's what you've got to think about because that's actually the most important part is what will they do once they stop watching your video? Okay, so if, for example, I want them to all go and check out my website at the end of my video, then I need to ask them, make sure you go and check out my website at the end of this video. I'll leave the website URL just below in the comment box. I'd love to hear your feedback. Okay, it's as simple as that, but you need to make your call to action very, very clear for them. Farewell. So just like we said hello in the beginning, make sure that you say goodbye in the end um, and thanks for watching and then asking for engagement. And if you jump on YouTube, all of the top YouTube uh, vloggers out there do this um, with every single video is they'll always sign off the video with, you know, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up or give me a like. I'd love to hear your comments below on what you'd like the next video to be about or, you know, uh, what's your favourite healthy tip for, you know, getting through COVID. If you ask for that engagement, people are more inclined to do it. And I know it sounds silly asking them to click like, but it's something that we have to do because it triggers people to think, oh yeah, I did, I watched that whole video, I liked it. I'll give it, I'll give it the click. I'll do that. So they are some very important things to think about before you start filming, because there's nothing worse than a rambling video that is about nothing where you watch a 10 minute video and then afterwards you go, what was that about? What were they trying to sell me? I don't understand. And bang, it's gone. The relationship's gone. So thinking about those five points will really help your videos engagement. And also thinking about the most watched videos on Facebook are actually between 60 to 90 seconds long. That is short. So what does that mean? You're much less likely to get engagement and a positive response from a 10 minute long video that you put out there. Keep it short, keep it to the point. And 80% of Facebook users would rather watch a video from a business than read a blog. So just like I was saying before, people would rather watch a video and that's going to be more rememberable. It's going to stick in their brain more than if they had to read something. Okay, so ideas for video content, because some of you might now be thinking, okay, I think I could maybe do a bit of a video, I'll give it a go, I can take a few practice runs, and absolutely, practice runs on my iPhone, I have so many bloopers, it's not even funny, because the amount of takes I have to do before I get it where, you know, yeah, I'm happy with that, oh, I, re I remember the whole line, I'm happy with that, you know, but remember, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're lacking in confidence, do a few practice goes. So some great content video ideas, a welcome video for your group members, share your why story like I showed you before, product of the week, product demonstrations. I know I'll always watch someone make a smoothie. I'll always do that, which is because I love smoothies and I have them, you know, at, at least once a day. So if there's a video that comes up on my Facebook feed of someone, oh, watch me make my morning smoothie, I'll always watch it, okay? Unboxing your order. People love unboxing videos, especially if you've got loads of different things in there where you're showing them, oh, this product, skincare, oh, cleaning products, weight management products, colostrum. You're pulling them out of the box. People love that feeling. It's quite engaging and quite exciting because you want to know what's going to come out of the box next. Lifestyle vlogs. So that's when I said things like if you're um, cooking and you've made a great recipe and you want to show them all in a quick little two minute video, look at what I'm cooking. Doesn't look, this look healthy and delicious? Or if you're outside going for a walk, look at how beautiful my, my uh, hike is today. Look at this beautiful setting I'm in. They're lifestyle vlogs. Um, and you may even consider when you've got a bit of traction in your group and you've got quite a few group members, maybe you want to do a live Q&A session or a live interview session with another customer or a member. So these are all some great tips for where you can start for creating engaging video content. And, you know, the best advice I can give you on video content is just do it. 
seriously, just do it because you actually never know. Uh, it's not about, it's not perfect enough, but it is about, I'll put this video out there and I'll see what kind of response it gets. And some of the time your topic or what you're showing, what you're saying will resonate with people more because it feels authentic and it doesn't feel fake. So, of course, I also wanted to touch on the what not to do on social media, because we also have to be wary of the company social media guidelines. We want to make sure we're utilizing social media the right way. So if you've got um, a personal product promotion or a personal discount that are only for your customers, this is where, you know, we like to encourage you to keep those in your group, keep those in your closed group, whether not out in a business page or a profile. Um, you know, we really want to encourage you not to publicly blast them everywhere. And I'm sure that you can all understand and relate to that. You never want to confuse our customers. You never want anyone to look at that, that person's group and that person's Facebook page and they get confused because they've got an offer and then they've got a different offer. And, and in the end, the customer is the one that loses because the customer ends up thinking, oh, I, I don't understand why it's different. Oh, it's all too hard to buy from. I don't want anything to do with it anymore. So we have to think about what's best for the customers. And so we always want to encourage you to keep those things in a group. Any content suggesting the amount of income you earn by becoming a new image member. So this is where you need to be very careful because you can uh, uh, be touching on solic solicitation, uh, basically, <laughs> if you go out making a claim like this on social media. And I'm sure some of you have all seen things like this in the social media world before, where you think, oh, I don't think they're allowed to say that because it's soliciting people to join my team. Team. And it's implying that you can earn a, a $500 paycheck simply by joining my team today. And we all know that's actually not true. It takes a fair bit of hard work to get a $500 paycheck. So it's not that simple. So make sure you're being careful with any of those posts that you're not implying um, the amount of money that they can earn by becoming a member. Any content suggesting third party alliances or endorsements? And this is where I always say, look, it is amazing. And we encourage you to go out there and make connections with other businesses, other small business owners. For example, if you've got a connection with someone who owns a gym or does some sort of exercise class or they're a fitness instructor, they are the ideal person to create an alliance with. But the only thing you need to be careful about is that you're not implying on social media publicly that new image the company has an alliance with them because it's you as an individual, as an independent new image member, you've got the alliance with the gym, not new image the company. So just being careful there that you're not suggesting that the company has a third party alliance. And of course, we can't make those outrageous claims that aren't supported by the company. We all know this, and this is basically so you don't get yourself in hot water. Obviously, you don't want to suggest something publicly on Facebook, like our products cure cancer, or they get, you know, they'll, they'll free your body from heart disease. We can't make outrageous claims like that. Of course, we've all heard those amazing stories and we all know our products can be life-changing, um, but we need to be careful how we share those. If you want to share something like that, do it as a testimonial, do it as an interview, you know, from someone that's got an amazing story, um, but make sure you are not going out there making those claims as though it was a company uh, claim and a company statement. So my final top tips, number one, start start. That is my number one tip. If you have been putting off social media, if you've been putting off utilizing Facebook because you just think, oh, it's a bit young for me, or it looks like too much work. I don't fully understand it. I can't be bothered. If you've been putting it off, this is where I say, put it off no longer and just start. Aim for one post per day and a minimum of one video per week. And if we think about it, well, how long does it usually take to put up a post? How long does it take 
to take a quick little selfie of yourself drinking your shake or holding a product or giving a quick little testimonial about how much you love this product. You know, aiming for one post per day, if you're doing that, amazing. You're definitely generating enough content to keep your audience engaged. And like I said, I would be aiming for a minimum of one video per week because people love watching videos. Choose authentic content. Always choose authentic content instead of fake or generated content because it's going to be more relatable. Remember those four content themes, lifestyle, product, testimonial and education. Social media and Facebook is all about building those relationships and relationships are two way. Converting your potential, cu potential customers into customers is only going to come from building those relationships with them. And building an online community can take time. So don't expect your social media presence and your social media group to happen overnight like that. And you'll have 100 group members and it'll be amazing and you're going to get new customer inquiries and product inquiries. It does take time. But the key to anything new and the key to success is commitment having commitment to saying, yes, I will do a post every day. I'll set an alarm in my phone to go off, you know, at 5.30 every day so that I remember to do a post. I will do that video every Sunday. Commitment to it. And that is how you're going to uh, have the success. That is how you're going to grow this fantastic online community and be able to convert those potential customers into your real customers and members. So I'll leave you with to take action and inch of movement will bring you closer to your goals than a mile of intention. So I'm sure some of you here have maybe had good intentions of getting on the social media bandwagon for a while. Well, it's time to take action. And of course, if you've got any questions or any feedback about tonight, I'd absolutely love to hear it. You can always contact me, emma.spence at newimage.asia. If you need any help, any assistance, I'm always here. Um, and I always say I'm the advocate for Australian New Zealand members. And I can't wait to see you all grow. I want you all to be sending me, Emma, follow me on Facebook. Emma, join my group, because I'll absolutely be joining. I can't wait to see it. Um, and thank you all so much for joining. I can't wait to get involved on social media, be a part of all of your groups and see what you're all doing. And I'll see you at the next training. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.